So first, let me give you a brief introduction about myself. So this is Gunjan Goyal. I have cleared 13 actuarial papers from the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries and Institute of Actuaries of India with some exemptions. I have pursued BSc Mathematics from Jadavpur University, Kolkata. I have a total of two years of experience of working in the industry, uh, six months in life insurance and 1.5 years in general insurance. Also, I have uh, been teaching for the last 4.5 years now. That's it about me. Now let's focus on uh, today that what we are going to do. It's ACET, basically Actuarial Science Common Entrance Test. So this exam is conducted by IAI, which is the Institute of Actuaries of India. There are two major institutes basically where the students uh, take exams from. There are obviously many societies of actuarial, but them two major institutes, which is called the IFOA and IAI. This is the UK Institute or Institute of Faculty of Actuaries, and this is the India Institute. From UK Institute, it's basically that you can give, give directly a paper CS1 or CM1 as a non-member and then take the membership or you can directly take the membership and start giving the papers. From IAI, there is a different rule. So from IAI, you first have to give its common entrance test. Obviously, there are some exemptions to some people who do not have to give this common entrance test, like somebody who has cleared CA or somebody who has pursued MBA, then they do not have to get, give the ASET to get the student membership. But for a general candidate who wants to start its actuarial journey from uh, Institute of Actuaries of India, they have to uh, first give ASET, which is a very, very uh, good uh, course because it lays a very strong foundation for one of your papers which is cs1 it lays a very strong uh, foundation for cs1 paper where all the mathematical notations the statistics which you do in aset is required okay first let us see the eligibility criteria for aset what does aset tell uh, who can pursue aset basically uh, so basically for aset the eligibility criteria is Anybody who has appeared for a class 12 examination and waiting for a result or have cleared it as well. Okay. Anybody who have cleared it as well. There is no age limit. There is no age limit. And also, but uh, a very... Uh, it, uh, it, it says it's a criteria, but it's not actually a criteria. It's just somebody who has... Interest in mathematics and statistics. Okay, so these are this is the eligibility criteria which is very uh, common to ten plus two appeared or cleared. Both works and there's no age limit for it. And somebody who's an interest in mathematics and statistics can also pursue a set. Okay. This was the basic eligibility criteria. Let's come to the exam pattern, which is very important for you to know at the outset before you start the course is the exam pattern or the exam structure, which we say. Okay. So firstly, it is a three hour exam. Okay, it's a three hour exam. It's an offline exam now from IIA. You don't know, you have to, uh, you have to uh, go to the center and give. Or an online exam, uh, which is uh, mentioned in the website. If you see if uh, whatever ASET uh, registrations has come out, it is mentioned there. Is it notifications? And then, it is a 100 mark exam. 
it is a 100 mark exam which with mcq with one correct answer with one correct answer for each question so it's a center based exam basically but it is an online exam so you have to go to the center and there will be computers in which you need to uh, select your options okay so it's an online exam but the uh, but you have to go to a center okay which will be allotted by ii depending on your city then this is there there's no negative marking there's no negative marking okay now let us see how is this 100 marks divided so distribution of questions distribution of questions it is such that there are 45 questions of one marks okay there is 20 questions of two marks and there are five questions of three marks okay so 45 questions of one marks 20 questions of two marks and five questions of three marks this is the basic thing is it will only be conducted on a single day with a single slot there is no uh, uh, multiple slots for the exam okay and finally the pass mark pass mark is fixed for the exam which is 50 okay the pass marks for this exam is fixed which is 50 coming to the syllabus Coming to the syllabus, it consists of five subjects, which is mathematics, statistics, data interpretation. English and logical reasoning. Okay. So these are the five subjects to the paper. There is no sectional cutoffs or there is no section wise paper which is divided. But yes, there is a division on the syllabus uh, of how the marks will be distributed to the syllabus. But these are the major five subjects. Mathematics consists of 30 marks. Statistics of 30 marks. Data interpretation is 15 marks. English is 15 marks. And logical reasoning is 10 marks. Okay. So these are the major contents of your paper. Obviously, maths has a different syllabus. Statistics has a different syllabus. Similarly, DI, English and logical reasoning. But you can see the major portion. 60% of your paper covers from mathematics and statistics and the remaining is there. The maths which you study in AC8 over here is not a very difficult level maths. Uh, the base is of class 11 and 12. You have your... Uh, very easier mathematics also uh, like differentiation integration forms the base then you have uh, other syllabuses like uh, um, i would say uh, permutation combination is there in statistics then we have vectors matrices in mathematics there are obviously some higher order uh, uh, some of the higher order functions and numerical methods which you have not done in class 11 and 12 maybe which you'll be doing over here but otherwise it is very much forms the base from class 11 and 12. there is statistics where you will uh, do a lot of chapters there will be obviously some things which you have never heard of also and you will be starting from scratch over here but it is a very important statistics part which will lay a base for the paper cs1 it will almost cover the initial chapters of your CS1 preparation. Okay. Then we have English. English is generally uh, spoken English. It is vocabulary English. Uh, 
like uh, synonyms, antonyms, sentence making, fill in the blanks. So it's a very easier based English. You will get a, we'll get, give you a set of uh, synonyms, antonyms to learn and we'll give you a set of verbal reasoning to uh, solve. And it will all come from practice. English is majorly practice. Then what is data interpretation? This is one of the most scoring parts of the paper. Okay. Why this is the most scoring part? If you know how to interpret graphs, it is basically only charts, mostly different types of charts like column graphs, bar graphs, line graphs, pie charts, Venn diagrams. All these are covered in uh, data interpretation. If you can read that and if you can see, uh, see your answers and figure out, you can also do a back calculation. See from the options, only those four options you can test on the graph. It, it saves a lot of time also. Okay. Logical reasoning. This is one of the trickiest parts of the entire paper, logical reasoning, because this contains a different type of sum. There are a lot of tricks which you need to follow for logical reasoning. There are different type of number sums. There are different type of chair sums that if somebody is sitting beside this and who is ultimately sitting beside whom. There are different type of clock sums like the hand, uh, minute hand and the second hand and what does the angle form. There's a different type of logical sequence like if there is one three, five, then what is the next number, so on. Okay, there are different type of blood relation sums, then Mr. X, Mr. Y is, Mr. X is giving this to Mr. Y, and if it, Mr. Mr. Y giving to Mr. Z, and so on. So this is a sequential sum, all these seating arrangements, everything comes under logical reasoning. Obviously, there are ticks and trips to this uh, logical reasoning portions. Okay. So this uh, is basically my exam details. Now coming to your exam date. ACITs are generally conducted uh, twice or thrice a year. Okay, currently this year one ACIT has already happened, which is March 2023. Next attempt is June 2023. Okay, it's 24th June 2023. Your registrations for ACIT has already started. Registrations have already started and it closes on 24th May 2023. Registrations closes on 24th May 2023 and the next ACET will be held in November or December. Uh, the next ACET is going to be held in uh, December. That is next exam is on 23rd December. Okay. And your results date for this term is 4th July. Okay. So it comes out very quickly. Within 10 days, you can see the results will also come out for your exams. And then you can take membership of II once you can clear the exam. Okay. Fair enough till here. I hope there's no doubt till here. Okay, so today we'll be starting with mathematics first. Okay, we'll starting we'll be starting with the maths portion of your syllabus first, and the first chapter we'll do is. Uh, approximation. The first chapter we'll do with you is approximation. Okay. Number one. We'll do rounding. What is rounding? Rounding means rounding of the numbers. Okay. The rounding of the numbers to one decimal place. Two decimal places. Or rounding of two significant figures. So basically rounding of two decimal places. 
and rounding off to significant figures. Rounding off to decimal places and rounding off to significant figures. These are the two things we'll basically do. So let's take an example first. If I tell you all to round off 16.372845 to four decimal places. Okay, 372845 to four decimal places. What will be my answer? It will be, if I see the last two, this is not, uh, this is not uh, basically uh, changing. So if I say, how do you round this off? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. For this, there'll be no change in your previous number. For 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, you will increase to plus 1. Okay? You will increase to plus 1. So this is nothing but 16.3728. Okay? This is 16.3728. If I again tell you round this 3.784. Okay? To two decimal places. To two decimal places. My answer would be what? Here my answer would be. In this case my answer would be 3.78. Why? Because we are not increasing it for 4. Okay? I hope this is clear. Similarly, if uh, there, uh, if I ask you to round this minus 2.123456 to 4 decimal places, then what would be the answer? See, this becomes 6, this becomes 5. So minus 2.1235. Okay. Since there's 5, 6, I will make this 2. Minus 2.1235. Similarly, if I tell you minus 2.1. Minus 2.1. Two, two decimal places. Minus 2.1. To two decimal places. Then it would be minus 2.10. Remember, two decimal places have been set. So you need to show the two decimal places. Okay. Even if it is number six, number six to one decimal place. One decimal place. Your answer would be 6.0. Your answer should be 6.0. Okay. Uh, I hope it's clear with all of you. Okay. Moving on to Significant numbers. Now, what do I mean by significant numbers? Okay. The significant number. First thing about the significant number, the major important thing is, it is the first non-zero figure. So, you start your counting from the First non, not I should not say it is. I should say basically start counting from the first non-zero figure. Okay. So significant numbers means if it is said in the question to two decimal places, uh, two significant figures, it should be two significant figures only. That means two figures which should be significant in my answers. 
So if I say now, let's say the similar numbers, 3.784 to two significant figures. It's written as SF, two significant figures. Then how do I write this? The answer would be 3.8. 3 is a non-zero figure, which is non-significant, and 8 is a non-zero figure, which is also, so, so 3 is a signal. Three is a non-zero figure, which is significant. And eight is also a non-zero figure, which is significant. But there are times when we will have that after decimal point, we will have zeros, which will be significant as well. So if I tell you 0 0.56 to two significant figures, 0 0.56 to two significant figures, this can be written as 0 0.56 or it can only be written as 0.56. Why? Because the first significant figure is the non-zero figure, which starts from 5. Okay? The first significant figure starts from a non-zero figure, which is 5. Okay? Similarly, if I give you 0. Point, okay, 3, 0, 0, 0, 0 point, 2531 to 2, <laughs> to three significant figures. Then my answer would be what? Can you all type in the chat box, please? Yes, it would be 0.253 or we can write it as 0 0.253 as well. Okay? Because the significant figures start from a first non-zero figure. Or let us take a single, a different example, something like this. Zero point zero eight zero zero six to three significant figures. Then what would be the answer? Then what would be the answer? If I take this as my uh, solution, then what would be the answer to three significant figures? Uh, it's 0 0.08006. First, read the question properly. There's a zero before uh, your rules. Let me write it in a bigger. 0 0.08006. 0 0.08006. 0 .08006. This is the question. Anybody else? No. So all of you are wrong. Firstly, it is three significant figures and I told you should start counting from the first non-zero entry. Okay. So it will become 0 0.0801 where first zero and the second zero does not have any significance in my counting. The significant counting starts from one, two, three. Okay, so it becomes 0 0.0801. Okay, it should start your counting from the first non-zero figure. Even if I tell you, say 1.099 to three significant figures. Six, you can round this off to six to one. This 6 can be rounded off to 1. 0 0.08006 can be rounded off to 0 0.0801. Then we have 1.099 to 3 significant figures. Correct. 1.10. This is the answer to your significant figures. Okay, so any number, if I even give you, say if I give you a whole number, if I write, tell you 03, 
zero zero. Okay. Suppose this is the number. If I tell you to write this to three significant figures, then what will your answer be? It should be three hundred. Why? Because anyways, the first two zeros are non-significant. Okay. First two three zeros before any number becomes non-significant. Okay. So it so it is three hundred over here. Clear? Okay. Moving on to notations. Okay, the basic mathematical notations which should require your uh, in your essay. Okay, first is Z. Z corresponds to integers. Okay, Z corresponds to my integers. Integers can be again positive and negative both. If I write Z plus, it means positive integers. Z plus means positive integers. So in on a time, on a number line, if this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, then from here, on the right hand side, we have a Positive integers, this is z plus, and z minus is from the negative side. Okay, and integers include 0 as well. Okay, so 0 is an integer. Okay, integers include 0 as well. Then what we have, second is what we have is n. n corresponds to natural numbers. Okay, what do you mean by natural numbers? Natural numbers start from 1. Okay, it starts from 1, 2, 3. The set of natural numbers means it will start from 1. Third, we have is Q. Q means rational numbers. Okay, what do I mean by rational numbers? Rational numbers means anything which can be written as fractions. Anything which can be written as fractions and makes sense. Okay. So 3 by 2. I can write 1.2 as 6 by 5. You have 0 0.1414 which you can write as 14 by 99 and so on. Okay. Or you have 0 0.2 which you can write as 2 by 10. Okay. Or 1 by 5. Okay, which is also a rational number. Then what we have? Fourth is real numbers. Real numbers are denoted by R. Okay, now what do I mean by real numbers? Real numbers include both rational and irrational numbers. Okay, rational numbers basically mean whatever we can write as fractions or whatever we have in our um, original space, in our number space, anything which is there on my number line as well, I can write as rational numbers. Uh, something like root 2, root 3 are irrational numbers or pi, which cannot be divided. Okay, I'm really sorry, real numbers will come from rational numbers. Rational numbers which can be written as fractions. Something which cannot be expressed as fractions. Okay. Which cannot be expressed as fractions. But do not have, do not have 
any imaginary component as well. Do not have any imaginary component as well. Okay, they will not have any imaginary component on their number list. Okay. Next, we have fifth is complex numbers. Complex numbers are one which can be written in the form A plus IB. Okay. A plus IB where I is nothing but root over of minus one. Root over minus one is an imaginary number. Okay, it's an imaginary number. It is not a real number. It's an imaginary number. So, A plus IB is a complex number where I is an imaginary number. So, any component which contains an imaginary number is called a complex number. Where, whereas, real numbers will not have any imaginary component. Okay, they will not have any sort of imaginary component. Coming to next part which are the logical notations, logical notations, okay? What are logical notations? When I write an inverted A, I write an inverted A. Maybe you all are seeing this for the first time when you all are writing this. For all values, it means it is read as for all values. Okay. It is read as for all values. Or I can say. Suppose I write. X square plus 3x. Minus 2 is equal to 0. Suppose this is an equation. Minus 4 is equal to. If this is not satisfying anything. Minus 4 is equal to. I will write for all values of x. It satisfies this equation. Okay. Or if it only satisfies for all x values belonging to real numbers. Or x belonging to natural numbers. Or x belonging to only integers. Or x belonging to whole numbers. The difference between natural numbers and whole numbers are whole numbers written as w. is whole numbers start from 0. Natural numbers start from 1, whereas whole numbers start from 0. Okay? So, this means for all values, x belonging to this. Then I have a colon. Colon means such that. It is generally used in set theory, where we write x such that x belongs to natural numbers. Okay. X such that X belongs to natural numbers. So if, if any equation has a variable X, it means X such that X belongs to natural number. X is used in a way that X belongs to natural numbers. When I write an opposite of E, inverted E, flipped E, it means there exists. There exists. There exists an X which belongs to R. I can write this as there exists an X which belongs to the natural numbers or there exists a Y which belongs to real numbers such that X plus 1 is equal to 5. Okay. So there exists an X obviously which will satisfy this equation. A natural number which will satisfy this equation. Clear? Am I clear with what is there exists? Next is opposite to this. There doesn't exist. There doesn't exist. Okay. Then we have implies, implies. If I say x equal to minus 2, implies x square is equal to 4. 
Okay. This is what do I mean by implies sign. When I write as double implied, both side is arrow. It means implies and is implied by. Implies and is implied by. That means if x is equal to 2, I can write this both implies x cube is equal to 8. That means what from x cube 8, I can get x is equal to 2. And from x equal to 2, I can get x cube is equal to 8. Okay. Implies and is implied by. Then we have if and only if. If and only if. Very, very important notation and you should understand that if and only if means implies and implied by. That means if this is happening then. So if I write if x is equal to 2, then only x is cube is equal to 8. Okay. If and only if x is equal to 2, x cube is equal to 8. Or if and if only if x cube is equal to 8, x is equal to 2. Okay. This is true. But this is not true in this case. x is equal to minus 2, then x square is equal to 4. Why? If and only if. Because even if x is equal to 2, x square is equal to 4. Okay. Even if x is equal to, this is not an if and only if situation. I would write if and only if, if I write if and only if x is equal to plus minus 2, x square is equal to 4. If you write both, but only in this scenario, if and only if does not work, work, work or both implies do not work because x square equals to 4 can be implied as x is equal to plus minus 2. Now coming to what is plus minus? Plus minus are notations where an answer will give me both plus and minus. Okay. An answer will give me both plus and minus. Where I take plus first minus second. Okay. Where I take plus first minus second. Then next notation is sigma. What is sigma? Sigma means summation. Adding. Okay. Anything sigma means summation or addition. I can write x plus x2 xn can be written as summation x equal to 1. Summation n is equal to 1 to n or not. Let's not use n because it's given in the sum. Summation i is equal to 1 to n xi where i takes values 1 to n. Clear? The summation is clear. x1 plus x2 dot 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 xn. I can write i is equal to 1 to n summation xi where i take values from 1 to n. Similarly, we have capital pi. Not small pi, but capital pi. Capital pi. Okay. Which uses product. This means product. So x1 into x2 into x3 into xn can be written as again pi i is equal to 1 to n xi. Pi i is equal to 1 to n xi. Okay. Then what we have? We have infinity, obviously. You have infinity. You have proportionality. Proportionality. Proportionality means A is proportional to B, which is directly proportional. That means A is directly related to B. If A increases, B also increases. Okay, if A increases, B also increases. You can write the meaning of this. If A increases, B also increases. Or A is inwardly related to B. That means if A increases, B decreases. Okay, 
This means if A increases, B decreases. This is called proportionality. Okay. Next we have alpha. There's a difference in the sign. You can see proportional is written this way and alpha is written this way with a small, it's like an A, okay? With a little bit outside, it's alpha. It's a Greek letter, okay? Greek letter or Greek symbol, okay? Alpha. Similarly, we have beta, we have gamma, okay? Beta, gamma, okay? Then, y'all can write if y'all want first, then we'll move to the next page. Then we have A bar. A bar means mean. Mean is denoted by a bar. Okay, we can write it as A bar, X bar. Okay, it means mean. Then you have modulus, mod of A. Mod of A, which is the modulus function. Okay. We'll do modulus properly uh, as a function when we do functions and relations. Okay. Then we have Y dash, which is equal to nothing but dy by dx, which is my first order differentiation first order differentiation i put a double dash that means d square by by dx square which is my second order differentiation and this dashes keep on increasing as i move further you put three dashes with third order differentiation okay next is partial derivatives if i write y1 then i take partial derivative with respect to first variable, partial derivative with respect to first variable. Okay. Y1, if it is written, or you can write del y by del x. Del is also meaning partial. Okay. You write del. Del means partial derivative. Okay. Not dy by dx, but delta y by delta x. Okay. Del y by del x. Then we have delta. Delta representing very small change. Delta, very small change. Then we have exclamation mark to show the factorial of a number. Factorial of a number. Delta exclamation mark shows the factorial of a number. Then what we have, set theory, uh, if we, I write the set theory now, set theory, one, two, anything in curly brackets is known as a 
set a number any set of numbers in a curly bracket numbers alphabets any sort of uh, categories given in curly brackets is known as a set then we have open and closed brackets open and closed brackets so if i write minus infinity with the first bracket and zero with the closed bracket so they just note this down this means open bracket open bracket or open end open end this means closed bracket or closed end closed end okay which means what in this whenever i write this type of thing it means minus in the set the set is going from minus infinity to zero but minus infinity is not included minus infinity is not included and when i write the closed end it means zero is included in the set zero is included in the set Okay. I hope you all have written this. Okay. Moving to the next page. Next thing. Let's take an example. Just tell me what will be the set. If I tell. what would be the set for this what would be the set numbers exactly it would be minus 5 minus 4 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 Zero, one, two, and three. It will not include four. If I, if I just make this, if I just make this as this, if I just make this as this, then. It will ju we'll just remove. Minus five from here. Okay. Do one example more. If I give you both closed things.
uh, that's correct. Okay, so it will include both ends of the number. If we have both open ends, then we'll not include both ends. If we have both closed ends, we'll include both uh, ends of the number. Next we have is, next notation which we'll do is null set. Okay, a null set. Or an empty set. Clear? Then we have belongs to. Belongs to. Whenever we write this epsilon, we mean belongs to. Okay? Its name is epsilon. Okay? It's called epsilon, which means belongs to. If I write 2.5 belongs to real numbers. Okay? 2.5 belongs to real numbers. Then we have union. Union of two sets. Union of two sets. That means we will, if I have a set of say 2, 3, 5 and B of 1, 3 and 7, A union B will means I can take all the things of both the set. So, 3 occurs two times. 1, 2, 3, 3, 5 and 7. Things that are in one or in other or both. Okay? Things that are in one that are in other or both. A intersection B. A intersection B Things that are things that are common in both. Okay, this is called intersection. Okay, A intersection B. So if I take these two sets, what is my A intersection B? It is three. Okay, it is only three. Clear? We have complement of a set as well. What does complement mean? A complement or A bar also it can be written. A complement. Huh, we don't write repeated numbers. We don't write repeated numbers. Uh, but I here to just show you that I have included both the sets. Since 3 is present in both, you can remove 3. Okay? We don't write repeated numbers. So just tell you that I have taken both the sets in common. Okay? It's the same element. A complement that is not A. Things that are not in A. Okay? So if I say, if I say a diagram, say this is a set A where A contains 1, 3 and this is an universal, uh, this is a set of uh, natural numbers. If the entire set is of natural numbers, then I say that 2, 4 and so on are not in A. That is A complement. Okay. Then we have other is tends to, tends to, that means approaches to or x tends to infinity, means x is becoming close to infinity or x has, x has a very, x is becoming very large, okay? X is a very large number. Clear? Am I clear with the notations? Okay. 
ओके ग्रीक सिंबल्स इफ यू सी आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू ऑल अल्फा बीटा गामा देन वी हैव डेल्टा विच आई हैव टोल्ड यू ऑल देन वी हैव एप्साइलिन आई टोल्ड यू ऑल देन वी हैव थीटा ओके थीटा अगेन यूज इज पैरामीटर वी हैव गामा ओके सो कैपिटल बीटा इज अ बीटा फंक्शन कैपिटल गामा इज अ गामा फंक्शन ओके कैपिटल डेल्टा इंडिकेट्स डिफरेंस एफ साइलन इज अ स्मॉल आई टोल्ड यूर बिलोंग्स टू थीटा वी हैव कप्पा के वी हैव लैमडा विच इज यूज एज अ पैरामीटर वेरी वेरी एक्सटेंसिवली म्यू विच विल बी यूज एज मीन इफ यू सी मेनी प्लेसेज वी राइट म्यू एज मीन सिग्मा वी हैव न्यू सो ऑल दिस इज अस्ट ऑफ ग्रीक सिंबल्स विच यूल फाइंड द मटीरियल एज वेल ओके पाए सॉरी पाए दिस इज कॉल्ड सॉरी दिस इज कॉल्ड साय ओके दिस वी हैव पाए दिस वी हैव फाइ ओके दिस इज कॉल्ड फाइ देन दिस इज ओमेगा ओके तो दिस आर डिफरेंट कन्वेंशन दीज आर डिफरेंट ग्रीक लेटर्स विच वी हैव clear all this is clear to all of you anything which is not understood okay let's do an example if i say p is a prime number set p is a prime number q is a even number p is a prime number and q is a even number what will m of p intersection q means if p is a set of prime numbers and q is a set of even numbers what will be the intersection b exactly it will only be a set of 2 it will only be a set of 2 very good okay so you can understand what do what is uh, what do i mean by this or if i say uh, let's do one more if i say x belongs to real numbers where x square is less than 10 x belongs to real numbers where x square is less than 10 no wrong x belongs to real number x square is less than 10 means either x so x can be what root over 10 okay if x square is less than 10 means x can be less than root over 10 but with a plus minus sign so whenever i solve with root i can either get a minus to i for square for a square root i will always get a plus sign and a minus sign okay so x can be Minus ten. So if I take minus ten, if you remember, whenever we had minus sign, we just change the sign. Okay. So when I write this, I can write it as minus root over ten to root over ten. Okay. X belongs to real numbers. X does not belong to any integers. Real numbers included both fractional and non-fractional numbers. Okay. So we have minus ten to root over x to root over ten. Why? Because with a minus sign, my sign gets inverted. Okay. So if my minus sign is here, then it will become x is greater than minus root over ten, 
and x is less than root over 10 okay is this question clear okay then let's keep it till here just revise everything for today and then we'll again meet tomorrow and we'll do this uh, we'll continue with our class Okay